Now we'll go back into the admin screen after you change your password and go down to user profile. You can put in your new easy to remember password in the current password box. And click unlock profile. When the unlock profile goes gray, then you can change your profile information and answer your security questions. If we set up your account, your phone number is probably not correct. And then uh, you can check your email address because this is the one that will be used to send your email information and change your time zone if, if you choose. Next, we'll go to security questions. Under security questions, um, we have the option to answer six questions. Three are required to be able to use password assistance. You can click on add new record either at the top or the bottom of the window to add a security question. If you click the drop down here, it'll show you the six questions that you can choose from. So select a question. Type in your answer and click on the little checkbox to insert. It'll save your answer. Like I said, you'll need at least three security questions to be able to use the password retrieval. So if you want to go ahead and answer your three security questions, I'll give you some time to do that. Once you've answered your security questions, click on the Profile tab again and click Update Profile at the bottom of the window. You should have a red notice in the upper left corner that your record has been updated. When you log on to the fuel tax system for the first time, you'll go to the home screen. This will be the default screen when you log in. This view shows that widgets have been hidden. I'm going to close this bar. And the default view contains just a calendar. You can click on Tools and Create Dashboard to set the layout of your home screen. You have six layout choices to choose from. Give your dashboard a name and click Submit. And then the option to add widgets appears. So you can click on Add Widgets, add a message center if you'd like, click on Add Widget calendar. You can choose what you want to see. Um, as you become more familiar with the system, you'll see which ones work best for you. Uh, the five widgets we have available in the test system are the message center, calendar, tax session count per session, per period, excuse me, and tax session status per period, as well as tax session workflow. 
When you're done adding widgets, you can click on Close. Even though you can't see it clearly, I have a two-column setup. I can drag my widgets over to the column I want, so I can have them side by side. You can also customize your widgets. If you hover over the title bar, you'll see the menu that comes up on the right of the title. There's a minus sign, which minimizes your widget. Then the The gear allows you to change options. You can change the title of your um, widget, the default color for the title bar, refresh interval, um, different view options, click Submit. Each widget has different tools available, so if you click on the gear, you can see what choices you have. <coughs> I'll give you a few minutes to play with your dashboard and widgets, and then we'll go on to some of the other screens. Okay, this is our dashboard or home screen, and this is the first view you will see when you log on each time. For those involved with tax reporting, most of your activity will be in the tax filing screen. If you click on the second tab, we'll go into tax sessions, and you won't have any information available here because you don't have a license or any tax reports yet. If you are filing a report, either using manual entries or Excel downloads, you would click on Add New Record. To be able to select the type of report you're licensed for from the drop-down box and create a session. If it's a monthly report and you put in the beginning date here, it will automatically uh, calculate the ending period date. The other thing you can see from tax filing are transactions. So if you have a report that you have started and click on transactions, it would list the schedules that are available and the transactions for each schedule. The other option under tax filing is transaction validation. When you do an Excel or XML upload and you have errors, you can go into transaction validation. It will identify the errors for you and allow you to correct them or do a, uh, redo your upload. The last option in tax filing is view tax return. And again, since we don't have any data, there's nothing in this view. I will log off of this company and log into another one after we go through the basic screens to show you what some of this information looks like when it does have data. For those filing by XML, the e-file tab will be about all you need to know. If you go into e-filing and then e-file upload, click on add new record. 
You type in the description of the file you're going to be uploading. Use the select button to navigate to the file on your computer. And click on upload. The XML schema will contain your company name, reporting period, and type of report, so you won't need to make those selections when you do an XML upload. The Maintenance tab is where our information databases reside. If you click on Maintenance and Business Entities, you'll see a list of companies that are currently licensed with the Fuels Tax Group. This provides some basic information on about 1,900 companies. This includes real companies and fake ones that we have set up in the test system. To select which information shows up in your columns, you can click on the columns in the upper right corner. It will turn yellow when it's activated, and you can select which fields you want to see. If you have a scroll bar across the bottom, it comes in handy to remove some columns so you don't have to scroll unless you need that information. The ID number is arbitrary. The master company ID zero means this company was added by the fuels tax system or by ODOT fuels tax. The company legal name, whether it's an FEIN or social, their ID number, and then the effective dates will probably be January, even though you won't be able to file until July and some name information. If you want to export this information to Excel, in the lower left corner, there's an export to Excel option. And you can choose Excel or CS, CSV formats. Click Submit, and it'll show up in the scheduled tasks. Click on the output file information here when it appears, and you can open it in Excel or CSV. If you need to add a company that's not on the list because it's a company you do business with, you can click on Add New Record either at the top or the bottom. Or if you want to modify some of the information for a company, you can select that company. Click on Copy. You can add um, an address, contact information, uh, something else that identifies it as specific to your company and then click Insert. It'll tell you the record's inserted. And then when you go back to the list, that company will show with your master company ID. This means that there is information in this, in, in this company that is specific to your, to your company, and it's not available to view by other companies. So each of you should just have one other listing with your company ID number and then a bunch of master company zeros. Uh, any company that you use in an Excel or XML upload will show up on your master company ID list as well. Any questions about the business entities? Uh, the next tab in maintenance is company information. And this is information about the company that we set up today for this demo. So it has the licenses that are available for your company. Uh, details, which is very slim. And then it has your uh, FEIN and your logon. Next under maintenance is locations. And this is a list of um, licensees, uh, locations in Oregon. It also includes terminals in British, in uh, Canada and Mexico. The location list was devised from information we received from the Department of Agriculture. So any of your customers that you deliver to and also your own locations will be here 
if it's subject to Department of Agriculture um, licensing. If you have um, customers that aren't listed, you can add new record and add your customer information. You click insert. As with the um, business entities, you can use columns to show which information you uh, want to see. And then you can also use group by, if you want to group them by region, state, or any of the other um, uh, column headings. And then also with our filters, if you click on a filter, it'll bring up the filter option with each uh, column heading. If you were looking for something in a specific city, um, say Salem, you could type in Salem and select contains or any of the other filter options. And it would bring up a list of locations in Salem. Turn off filters by clicking the filter button. As with our other databases, if you select a customer and want to change information for your own purposes, you can click copy. Add uh, a customer ID code or whatever else you want to add. Click insert. And it will insert that record into your company information, gives it a new ID number, and identifies it as unique to your company. company. Next on the maintenance tab is a list of taxpayer contacts. <coughs> and this is kind of like an electronic address book. You can add uh, contacts using either the upper or lower add new record. This does not give them access to your company information. It just puts their name and inform their information available to you. Last on the maintenance tab is the list of terminals. And this is a list of terminals throughout the US and Canada. Again, you can use the filter or group by to select areas that you want. And all of our databases in the maintenance section have the option to export the information to Excel if you want to look through it. Hi, Harry. Going to check if I have a left the field team. It's got a flasher on it. I think that's the next tab we're looking at is the account tab for registration and registration status. You won't have any information in this area now, but this is where you'll go to apply for a license. When your official company comes on to the system live, your existing licenses will already be preloaded. But for your test company that we established today, you can click Add New Record. Select the type of license you want to apply for, whether it's motor vehicle fuel dealer, use fuel seller, or use fuel user. Click insert. And then the license information will be there for you to complete. Under the account management is the financial part of your account. It'll have company balance, which is currently zero because we haven't done anything yet. But you can also look at account activity, payment history, your processing setup, and making a payment. Yeah. Well, here's the story. 
on the admin tab. The first option is to change password. Yes, we've been here, looks familiar. Um, anytime you think your password has been compromised, you can go in and change it. Or if you have other systems where you're required to change your password periodically and want to keep them in sync, you can change your password at any time. The message center includes system generated messages. At this point, the only one you probably have is that your account request has been approved. This message center would be the same one that you have on your home screen if you chose the message center. So it's two ways to see the same information. Go back to the admin tab and look at the message center there. The next thing will be system activity. And again, because this company doesn't hasn't done anything yet, um, we don't have system activity here. The user list is where you can add additional users to your company information. This may not be important to you in your test company that you have set up now, but when your company goes live, one person will be designated the administrator and they will have the your company name underscore admin logon, similar to what you had today. You can click here to add new user. And this gives you the option to select your username. You can have two logons for the same person if you choose. So if your company name is long and you get tired of typing in the long company name underscore admin for the original admin account, you can give yourself an easier logon. You put in your contact information. You have to have a, a username and a valid email address. Company name is your company, and you have the option to set roles. The administrator has the most access to the system. Company certification has the least access. And the taxpayer is the one who generally prepares reports. So if you want to give someone else admin access, you can. We recommend that you have at least two administrators for each company account. That way, if you forget the password to one account, you'll have another option. Or if someone, if one person's not available to, to conduct administrator duties, there's a second person available. If you add a user with different uh, capabilities, um, yeah. you can also change them. So if you're the administrator and we're going to be gone during reporting time where you want someone to handle everything, you can go in and change their access at any time, make them administrator while you're gone, change them back when you get back. Send them the link to sign up. All you have to do is click message approved. Well, they show you all the warning labels and you know you can buy a new ones. And create new user. And they will get the same email. I already exist. What a surprise. <laughs> and they will get the same email you did, email you did to um, have access to your company. We do not have to approve new users for your company. This is your approval allowing someone else into your company records. As the administrator, you also have the option to lock somebody out. So if I wanted this person, don't want this person to have access again, I can reset their password, reset their profile, um, lock them out, and update the information. So at this point, I have, my demo is not, is not available. The last tab we'll look at at admin is the user profile. And again, this is where we started. Anytime you want to change information um, on your name, title, telephone, or email, or time zone, type in your password. This will be the new one that you set up, so it's not so hard to remember. 
click on Unlock Profile, and then you have access. Let me try this again. There you go. Then you'll have access to change your profile information, or you can change and add or delete your security questions. When you're done making any changes, make sure you update your profile or it won't save them. Now I'm going to log off and show you the reason that changing uh, your password is a good thing and then also answer your security questions. When you sign out or when you're ready to sign in, you'll see below the sign in area there's a section for password assistance. If you click here and don't and have answered your three security questions, you can enter your username. And then click next. Don't forget the admin part. It will ask me two of my security questions. and reset my password. It says the user has been updated and a new password has been sent. So I'll have a new password for this account um, when I log on to my email. Now to give you an idea of what some of those screens look like when you have more system activity, I'm going to log in to one of my other test cases that I've used for, um, system, for the system testing. So for this company, I have tax session workflow on my um, main board. And then I also have my calendar. This shows me my tax reports that are in process and their status. I have warnings on some, transactions entered on others. Once you have licenses, your calendar will be populated with due dates for users and sellers. On the tax sessions tab, these are all of the open reports that I'm working on. I can also click this drop down box and select all. If a report has been filed, It'll have a tracking number and a file date. If it is not, it'll just have a start date and the due date. When you do a report, the first report is sequence zero. And if you have an amended, it's sequence one. If you need to amend again, it's sequence two. So all these zeros are amended reports. And, or excuse me, all the zeros are original reports and the ones are amended. For this case, I've done an Excel upload and I have critical errors. So I'm going to select this report and I can either select transactions, schedule transactions here, transaction validation, or I can also select it here and look at transactions. I can select the report I want to look at in this section or from the other section. So this shows my Schedule 2 transactions, looking at uh, the Schedule transactions, or I can select the drop down here and look at any of the other schedules. To see what transactions I have. I can also go into transaction validation. And in this particular upload, I have 83 successful transactions and five errors. This tells me the schedules that my errors are on and the types of errors that I have incurred. 
I can click this line and it will bring up the schedule transaction box to allow me to fix that transaction. You can also sort any of these columns by clicking on the header. If you had a lot of transactions that have the same type of error, you may want to fix that coding error and reload your information. I can select a different report period by going to the report selection. And this one has no um, records display, but I can also view tax return. And it will bring up a PDF of the report if it has been generated. If it has not, or if changes have been done since I generated it, I will have a warning that return generation is required. From here, I can return to dashboard, or I'm gonna go back to my tax sessions, and I'll pick a return that has been generated, click on the regenerate button, and then I can view the tax return. Okay, it's still telling me I need to generate now, okay. Um, oh, there we go. So here's a PDF view. This happens to be a biodiesel ethanol producer form. Looks like a beginning um, entry has been put in, but that's about it. Um, from this view of the PDF, since I came from tax sessions, I would return to tax sessions if I click here. The e-filing tab doesn't have anything on it because I haven't done any XML uploads, but you would have the same type of information here if you had uh, an XML upload you're working on. The maintenance screens won't look any different other than if I look at locations. Now you'll see several companies with my master company ID because I've used them in my reports for various times. In my account registration and registration status, I have the licenses I've applied for and their status, either approved or available or rejected. Also in account management, I actually have a company balance. Uh, it should be zero. My payment should have posted by now, okay? And I can also look at my account activity. This shows the ins and outs of the various reports I've filed. Interest, penalty, tax due. Payment history. Shows the debit transactions I've uh, uh, initiated. Payment processing setup allows you to indicate whether you want one-time payments or recurring payments. If you click on this line, you can set up your account to auto-pay or be a manual transaction. And if you do select auto-pay, it allows you to select how, how recently. So you can do it on the due date, one to five days before, or immediately on finishing the report. And then you can update this information. If you need to update your payment information, you can use this link. The last thing on account management is make a payment. Um, this would be used if you have one person preparing the reports and someone else initiating payments. So one person goes up to the report completion portion and then someone comes in and makes the payment. Um, the system will not allow you to make a payment if you don't have a balance. So if I tried to make a payment now, it would tell me that uh, I can't do it. Sorry, can I make a question? Mm -hmm. Yes, Casey, regarding the bank information, do we need to use um, this option or can we still be 
using the method that we are using currently? Um, most transactions will be going through this website. I'm not sure what other options there are. Um, this basically sets up an ACH. It says U.S. Bank because that's the bank that um, ODOT banks through. Um, but you can set up any bank account information and it's usually ACH debit or credit. Okay, so we could use ACH and credit and pay with our bank. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. And again, since I don't have a balance, it won't let me make any payments. Um, that's about what I have to show you through the account screen. On the admin screen, again, there isn't anything different here from the other accounts. Um, I probably have myself listed a user. Yep, that's why I couldn't use my name again. It's already used several times. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. Um, if you have questions about basic navigation or anything that we've gone over, I'll go ahead and answer those now. Um, if you are set up to listen to, uh, to log in for one of our other webinars on reporting, we'll have dealer reporting next week and then sellers and users. If you're, if you're going to be um, coming to one of those webinars uh, for licensing, you want to go into account, registration, registration status, and then you can add new record. And select the license type, and then you'll have a license available um, to practice our um, our reporting when we get to the next webinars. What? Can I ask a question? What What webinar would be best? Because we're we're in Washington State, and we just do card lock reporting. So, what webinar would be best for that? The seller webinar. Because you just basically report your customers who purchased diesel in Oregon? Correct. Yeah, that would be the seller webinar. Yeah, the three levels of reporting that we're doing the webinars on, webinars on are the, are the uh, used fuel seller, which are stations, uh, fleet fueling, card lock, and retail that uh, sell diesel in Oregon or have customers who purchase diesel in Oregon. The motor vehicle fuel dealer is the gasoline, um, avgas, and jet fuel imported or exported and sold in Oregon. And then the used fuel user is individual fleets or um, companies with um, bulk tanks that need to report their diesel usage. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Linda, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I, uh, I'm from Tower Energy, and we are the, the fuel distributor, and we file different kind of returns. One, one happens to be the UBF tax return, and we have the use uh, fuel seller tax report. We have the city of Tigard, Washington County, and Multnomah County, so we file all these tax returns. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what webinar do we have to attend in order to go through all these tax returns? Um, you'll only need to go to two. Um, the motor vehicle fuel dealer will handle your Oregon gasoline, Multnomah County, Washington County, Tigard. Um, one thing that will become similar, simpler for all of you motor vehicle fuel dealers, there will be one report for all jurisdictions. You won't have to file separate reports for each city anymore. That would be great. Okay, now and when then, is this coming up? Uh, when is this coming up? That is next week, I believe, on the 7th or 8th. Okay. And, then, uh, and then the seller for diesel? Yeah. And then the diesel will be covered separately? And yeah, the diesel will be covered, covered separately, and that will be under the seller. Unless you just sell diesel in bulk, and then that would be part of the dealer report. Now, when are we going live on this, uh, the, this new system? Is it July, uh, August 1st? Um, the system will be actually be live, I believe, later this week. We are supposed to go live tomorrow. We're having a meeting on that this afternoon. Um, but you will not be reporting until August. You'll, you'll file your July reports in August on this system. Your June reports will still be filed on paper. Now, uh, is there a grace period that usually is given uh, as we can, can we, can we uh, do both and then uh, run one as a test uh, with the new system and then do still the, do the paper filing at the same time? 
Yes, um, that's one of the reasons we wanted to give you access to the test system is that you can practice filing your reports um, in this system that you have access to now. This is, the Z, it's, this is the ZMSA site and it's a test site that we set up to um, make sure everything worked right basically. And the companies that you have logons for now, you can apply for licenses, practice reporting, um, get the kinks worked out. If there's something you can't do, let us know. If there's something you're having problems with, we can help you work that out. Um, the idea is to help you get the kinks worked out before you're reporting live in August. That's why we're doing the webinars, and then we also did some in-person training for people in Oregon. The existing licensing will, uh, will not work. We have to apply for new licensing and then we get approved? Um, no. Your, for your live company, for your real company, your existing license is already in the system, which is why we ask you to use a different license number and different ID number when you applied this time. These are test companies. They don't have any basis in reality. It's all fake accounts. But you can practice reporting, you know, as many periods as you want to. Um, when the system goes live, you'll get an email saying that this, that the administrator address, if we have an email address on file, you'll be getting an email saying this person's been set up as the administrator. If you want to designate someone else as an administrator, you can. And then you'll get your actual live company logon information and you can add users then. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. The great thing about this system is if you do an Excel upload and you find out that something isn't right, you can upload again, it erases the stuff you did the first time and you get the whole new file. So on the live update that we get, um, will it have all of our current customers on there then? Or no, yes. we have to go and add those to the location? Um, all of your customers should be in locations. And when you start reporting, they will add them to your customer list, like you saw on this company that I have on their locations and entities. Mm -hmm. There are several companies now that have their master company ID instead of the zero, because they have done business with these companies or their customers have been here at some point during the testing process. So uh, if you do an Excel or XML upload, it happens automatically. If you do it manually, um, then once you select the company, it becomes part of your master company ID. I have a question about the Excel upload. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'm using the Excel to do both my diesel and gas reports on and mm -hmm. then emailing them in. Is that going to be the same format um, of the sheets that we can use to upload, or are we going to need to – do you have a format that you're going to send out? There is a format. Um, once you get a license, you can see the format. Because if you go to tax filings now and tax sessions, um, if I wanted to file a, um, let me just add a new record here. Um, if I wanted to file any kind I'll of report, file. I'll just pick on dealer because I don't have very many dealer reports in here. So maybe I, okay. I'll just pick a seller monthly report. Um, okay. And put in the month create the session, and then when I have the new report up here, I go down to the bottom and it says data file upload, and then at the bottom of this box is the download template. So this gives me the template for the current report. So each report has its own template style. Um, the only thing that's required is that you keep the same header information um, on the Excel templates. So in most cases, you'll be able to copy and paste your information from your existing reports to the new format. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we'll go over Excel uploads with each of the different reporting styles, as well as manual entries. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes? Are you guys going to be adding any more webinars? I'm scheduled for vacation that I've been scheduled on for, I don't know how long, um, for the user report. And we also mm -hmm. schedule, uh, we report quarterly. So okay. when would our first reporting period be? Your first reporting um, period would actually be October for the third quarter. Okay. Um, so, so are you guys going to be having any more webinars, like for like the individual ones? Uh, what we're going to be doing is if 
this is one of our first tests on the webinars, but the idea was to record this webinar and have a link available to it on our website so that if you want to review it, you'll be able to. Also, we're taking the information from the webinar and summarizing it into Word documents with screen prints. So, you know, to do this, click here, go there, you should see the screen, that kind of thing. And those will also be on our website probably later this week, uh, if not early next week. Uh, some of them are already drafted. We're just going to update them with more current information. So you're going you're to do that with each of the webinars? So yes, our plan is to record each one. Okay. Yeah, our plan is to record each one and have them available because especially for quarterly report quarters, you're looking at this three to four months before you need it. And, you know, with having your test company that you have now, you can go in and practice without any concerns, you know, reporting and how to put information in. Um, see if you can, I mean, take a prior period report and see if you can get it to come out the way it did on paper. Um, this test system is going to be available to you for the next two to three months, possibly till the end of the year. We haven't really decided how long, but um, that's one of the privileges of the test system. By coming into the webinar, you've got to log on. You can play in this test system as much as you want to, and it's not going to hurt anything. Excuse me, Linda, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, if, uh, I'm with a credit card processing center, and we file on um, fuel purchases at unattended sites once a month. Mm -hmm. what, what webinar? I haven't heard anything that similar. That would be sellers. It's the same as the card, their card lock transactions. Sellers? Yeah. It would be the used fuel seller. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, Linda. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I have a question. You said we can play uh, with everything we want with this uh, admin test. So can we upload mail and, and see if it is okay? Yes, um, you can, um, whichever type of license that you want to work with, you'll need to go to the account, registration, and registration status, and then you'll add new record to apply for either a seller, dealer, user license, or, you know, multiple if that's what you work with, and then you go ahead and insert that. I'll be monitoring this system. Um, for new applications for licenses, so then you can go ahead, once you have a license approved, you can go ahead and practice doing reports. And we generally re approve them back through January, so you can do any report from January 2015 forward. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we could do it later in the week. I, I apologize for that. I've got, I'm running the Anderson Fuel Act. Do we have any other questions? But if we're trying to, um, if our files are so large, we have to do the XML, mm -hmm. so we can still put that or what? Yes, you can still uh, do an XML file with the test system. You just have to um, have it formatted with your fake company name and fake company user ID. Okay. So you still, and if you want to test Excel, uh, or excuse me, test your um, XML uploads on your live data, like if you have filed your May report and you'd like to submit an XML file to see if it uploads correctly, um, you can email those uh, to Dan Paul, and we'll run tests on the, in the live system with your real company name. I'm sorry, I have a last question about the payment. If, we, if the return is zero, do we need to still, do we still need to, to charge on the payment? Did, did I? Okay, I can't hear you very well. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you better, thank you. Okay, yes, I was asking if the returns are always zero, do we still need to charge? The payment method. 
Um, we don't charge a transmittal to file a report with us. Um, your software company may charge a transmittal fee to convert to XML, but you still need to file even if you have a zero tax due. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Sorry, I would like to know what are the requirements for the certification? For XML? Yes. Um, generally, it's to file, um, you can submit XML files for two months and basically we'll run them to make sure they come out the same as your paper reports and then you'll be approved for XML filing. Okay, great. Do. do they have to match exactly to our paper return? You can do uh, two months of it. So if you want to do, if you have uh, like your May and June reports uh, filed on paper and also have an XML, you can submit that for testing. Okay, but you know that the form is a bit different from what we've been filing. Yeah, it is a little bit different. Um, and I'm not part of the XML certification team, so I'm not sure of the full process. I know that Dan and Jim are handling those things. Okay. So um, if you want to send me an email, I can forward it to Dan, or you can email Dan Paul directly and ask him about okay. XML certification. Good. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Linda, question. Yes. We're currently filing using Avalara already for many states, including Oregon. Okay. Prospectively starting 7-1, do we need to change what we're doing or can we continue with what we're doing? Um, from what I understand, they should be able to format things for their system. So I think you should be pretty close to good to go. Uh, I don't know if you still have to go through the XML certification process for us separately. Like I said, that hasn't been something I've been involved with. But, um, yeah, they should be able to get you set up to use their system pretty easily. Okay, great. Thank you. If there are no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this version of the webinar. Again, we expect to have this information out on our website um, as soon as we're able to convert it to a web-friendly uh, application. Uh, we'll be sending out emails to everybody who participated in the webinar to let them know where the webinars will be located or where the links to the webinars will be, as well as the instructions on completing licensing and reporting. Are there any other questions? Are we ready to go? Thank you. 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 You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.